All right, welcome to the Tokyo Auto Salon episode. So I'm gonna start this run through of all, I guess the favorite cars uh, that I've come across at the 2024 show. Uh, really bright and early, as you can see, there is nobody at the venue yet. Um, I got about an hour before the crowds start coming in. So I'm gonna just walk around and kind of stop by the cars that really stand out the most. I'm gonna be showing you everything, obviously, because that would be absolutely impossible. I'm just gonna pick what really stands out and we'll approach it that way. I think that makes the most sense. So let's get going. All right, and to get us going, this is one I definitely have to pick from the RMMEA booth. We're right in front of the main booth now, the lights are still off. But aside from the cars that are in the booth itself, it's this Familia rotary wagon that really stands out. So it's running a uh, slightly tuned uh, 13B, 210 horsepower. But I just love the rarity of this thing. I mean, you do not see these cars out on the streets anymore. And it's probably the first time I actually see one at Tokyo Auto Salon built in this way. So it's been a bit of a treat to kind of walk around and kind of dive into some of the details. Like a lot of Arimimiya builds, it runs on NK wheels, Nardi steering wheel in there. Just very simple, very clean, uh, typical Arimimiya style venting on the bonnet. And that very distinct look with that grill and that oil cooler out there. Absolutely sick. That joins a couple of other cars that we've seen before over the years and the four show cars that Ari and Mia have has put together uh, for 2024. Starting off with this 13B powered Eunice Roadster. Very authentically uh, built uh, FD. It really kind of follows what Ari and Mia has always done. Followed by a time attack car and that SA22 we were looking at during the preview post. This joins another cool selection of rotary cars and one of the most eye-catching, I guess, uh, um, Amemiya has built is this convertible FD with that front swap or rather redesign that he developed running Porsche-like lights. So as I'm shooting the car here, Amemiya san himself, Hi gozaimasu! Omo has actually started taking pictures of his own cars, which is really cool, including this lineup here. Um, so as I was saying, this is a very special car. One of the few convertibles that were built by Ari Mamiya. Uh, runs a custom cabin as well. Lots of cool bits on this. Uh, 13B is running ATD 06 turbo. So enough power for a bit of fun. Here's the looking FD we were drooling over the other day as it was getting unloaded from the truck. Sierra setup under there. About 550 horsepower, as the spec list says. There you go. I would say this is one of the smoothest FDs ever created. Lots of attention to detail. And, uh, you know, after seeing so many cars running FRP body parts, it's always nice to see something done in metal. So definitely gets my vote. And so we move to the TRA Kyoto Pandem uh, selection here in collaboration with Hardcore. And this car is something that really stands out, of course. This is what uh, K-Mura developed for uh, Mad Mike uh, for his 787 themed drift uh, project that he le recently unveiled in New Zealand. I actually saw the plans to this car in 2021 when Mira was still working um, on the pipe frame on his laptop. And basically this is a custom build, a custom chassis. Um, Mad Mike's is actually center driving position. And there's space back here to pretty much add any engine. I think it's probably gonna end up having a rotary too. Uh, but it'll be very cool to see what Mura-san is going to do with this. If we kind of know something about Mura is that he never fails to impress. And this is how you build a car. I mean, you know, uh, some people get so carried away with guys doing over fenders and wow, wow, wow this and wow, wow that. But um, this guy actually built his own car. I mean, you got to give props to that. So next to this creation is Mura's selection of trucks for the year. Starting off with this nice Datsun truck on Watanabe's. Very simple build, just very well executed in every way. Over fenders again, in typical fashion. So this is done in collaboration with JB Customs. Custom rear end here to hold up the suspension. A fuel tank there. Right next to it is this Hilux that kind of shows where Mura is possibly going towards. So aside from the fact that it's a 2J swap, we'll get to that in a second. The rear section is completely customized. So the rear bed has been removed and this pipe structure is being fabricated in its place. Kind of showing 
uh, maybe what you know he's kind of aiming to to do in the future more kind of this type of work rather than just concentrating on FRP over fenders but really cool to see pushing the boundaries there from Mira so this is going to be a drift setup and again this is done in typical Pandem style backed up by a 2J swap running a top mounted turbo here with an obviously externally gated wastegate there so to finish up the truck selection here uh, we have this Nissan Frontier on air suspension. Again, this is all done by Rocket Bunny Pandem. So full aero bumper, front and rear over fenders, naturally aspirated K under there, and kind of like a show truck meets cool street truck air suspension. So nothing too crazy going to go happen with this truck. I really love how the wheels kind of set it off. Interesting lip, it's kind of a little ribbed. But yeah, something different from Mira. I think he's definitely made an impact this year. Really stood out with three trucks and a custom car. Absolutely sick from Mira-san. So I thought I had to come back and show you guys the Ken Mary race car uh, homage here that was actually built on a Suzuki Mighty Boy. So kind of explains why the rear end, although it looks like a coupe, is actually an open pickup bed. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Absolutely sick build from the guys at Nats. So we had a bunch of comments about this thing. So this is actually based on a Suzuki Escudo and it's meant to look like an H1 Hummer. So no, it's not a Toyota Mega Cruiser or supposed to look like one. That is the theme that they've gone for and they just pushed it to the extremities because this thing is possibly as wide as a K car is long and long as much as an indoor swimming pool is long it's absolutely gigantic I just can't get over the size of this thing I don't know how they would have transported this here but yeah there you go now you know so this is really interesting I thought I'd give a few seconds of space to this car this is an ASL Garaya so this car was actually built probably a good 20 plus years ago uh, as part of a project between Autobax group and uh, I forget the actual builder but it was built in the UK based on a Lotus Elise chassis and probably running an SR20DE. It was a very unique uh, design, uh, as you can see from that side window, but it looks like the car is now back and it's EV. I'm not sure who is behind this project. Obviously, Autobax is, but who actually did the conversion to EV? Something we'll need to figure out, but um, it goes to show the car was actually really futuristic for its time. It actually looks still pretty current. Okay, let's take a look at this because this is probably the last time today that we're gonna get a clear look at all three garage active carbon fiber GTRs. Actually, the 33 isn't carbon yet. Probably will be at some point, but uh, you just gotta love the approach that these cars take. It's all about power. It's all about showing off and doing it well. And here's the 33 engine bay. No single turbo here, still twin turbo. HKS turbos uh, by the looks of it, GT3s, and uh, 615 horsepower, something a little bit more usable. Still, of course, has that wide body that a Garage Active is so famous for, and the rear fenders are blended in to the rest of the bodywork. I will have to stop by later and see when the carbon fiber version of this thing is going to make an appearance. And here it is. This is one car I really wanted to see on the Thursday during the setup, but unfortunately it was still covered up. So this is Mad Mike's uh, Mazda Savannah Firsty, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. This is uh, basically Mad Mike's uh, first fun car. Before he actually got into drifting, he was doing like skids in this car. Ended up selling it to buy his Mad Bull uh, to create that project and get into drifting professionally. And now, that he's in a position to uh, get this back. He actually did that and converted it into a four rotor uh, D1 drift machine that's gonna be entered in this season uh, of uh, D1 here in Japan. So this is gonna be one sick car to see in action this coming year here in Japan. Absolutely wild project done in collaboration with TCP Magic down in Kobe. And it is a very modern, drift machine unfortunately the bonnet is closed so we can't see the four rotor but wow what a beauty 
Okay, so uh, there were a lot of comments in the previous episode asking to see more of the GRMN Sentry SUV. So here it is. It is quite the sight. I spot some gigantic calipers up there. Um, carbon fiber, front lip spoiler and side skirts and rear bumper trim and a nice redesigned grille. Uh, it is quite the imposing thing. It's uh, very aggressive. It really stands out uh, compared to the regular car. There you go. Another look at the GRMN Sentry. Okay, so I am back at Liberty because finally I can get a look at the Countach and also the AZ1 Mazda based Mini F40. And here it is. Okay, so here we are with the Liberty Walk Countach and first time I take a look at it, it looks like the fenders have been kept in a similar shape that the 25th anniversary uh, contour was like. Uh, they're four centimeters wider on each side. Hey, hey, what's up, man? Dude, love the car, man. Absolutely sick. Mad Mike over there. What do you think about this? <laughs> Oh, indeed, and live to upset. Really, it has the impact from the back, as you can see here. With that crazy diffuser setup, the exhaust doesn't joke around either. Custom panel for the uh, rear light grill. And yeah, like I was saying, it's four centimeters wider on each side, and it includes a typical very low skirt there, and complete bumper splitter redesign, so pretty much this section forward is all new, incorporates the lip spoilers and canards, the new grille and running Rohana forged wheels. And the best part of this car is that me and Larry are going to get to shoot it tonight, possibly together with the rewrapped F40 from last year. So um, we're going to be trying to replicate our epic shoot from last year and do it in style with two cars. So. I will probably do a video just about that. So one more thing to look forward to from the crazy Tokyo Auto Salon weekend here in Makuhari. I think these are gonna look so cool together. So while we're here at Liberty Walk, I really have to spend a few seconds with these cars. They always hit so hard. Of course, this is the original Ken Mary that Kato built probably like a decade ago. Uh, one of the favorite photo shoots I've ever done for Speed Hunters. I got to spend the whole day with this thing uh, out there close to um, the main headquarters outside Nagoya and a sick Hako next to it. Uh, for me, Liberty Walk will always remain uh, a Kyusha shop. Uh, I think the vision that Kato always had is to kind of take that Kyusha vibe and apply it to expensive exotics and pretty much anything he can come up with. So always cool to the, kind of be reminded where that comes from. So as you can see, they're now opening up to the crowds. Massive lineup of people waiting to get in. I'm actually going counter traffic and crossing over to the other hole where um, there's a special Porsche I want to take a look at. One that I couldn't get to see on the setup day. So this is another car I really wanted to take a look at the other day, but uh, time was what it was. And that is the new Caterham V project, still a concept car but a functioning one and very close look to what the final car will be. This is Caterham's vision of the future and I really like what I'm seeing. They've kept that ethos about, you know, keeping the weight down and uh, they have a very interesting approach. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much into it because I actually might have um, a way to get a closer look at this car later in the year so I'm gonna keep it for then but uh, you know for the time being just wanted to show it to you uh, very different from what we're used to from Caterham but uh, uh, possibly a, a right step in the right direction okay so we are here at the Motorhead booth and this is literally the only car I wanted to see on uh, Thursday setup but unfortunately they ended up having a little bit of problem with unloading and they actually uh, broke um, some part of the front cowl which had to be fixed at a body shop uh, before the show so they scrambled to get the car here but it is here now this is a Madeleine 935 project based on a 964 a complete replica of the Kramer car and 
What a sight it is. It's absolutely gigantic. The dimensions are insane. This is definitely one of those cars that we need to spend way more tar time with to kind of, you know, dive into all the details. It is shockingly well built, right down to these massive BBS motorsport wheels with slits and aero discs on the front here. It is a sight to behold. So we are here with the man himself, who's actually gonna open the rear cowl for us. So we can take a look at the insane engine, which has a really interesting uh, fan shroud um, setup. He's even got a custom made prop for it. Look at that. Turbos mounted, hanging off uh, the engine block. And there's a fan trip set up, so it's uh, in the middle, like the flat 12s. What an amazing sight. And look where the intercoolers are placed, over there. So they're pretty much where the rear seats used to be. Take a look at the cabin with that dry sump oil tank on the passenger side. See how the cage is actually spoiling off like a transmission tunnel as well with the brake bias adjusters. Absolutely insane. They're all getting a group picture with Max Orito. This is the team that created this incredible vision of a 934. Passenger side. It sure looks like a brand new Porsche, like something modern, like a 992. Even the door trim is on point. Even though it's an FRP door, he's actually gone and done some kilted handling there. Probably the last time we can get this profile shot before the crowds start rolling in. You can see the heads under there and the support for the external wastegates. So these are actually legit KKK turbos from the era, as are these Porsche wastegates. So absolutely legit stuff happening here. You can see all the venting here for the intercooler setup. Hopefully it's in a position to get enough fresh air. So there you have it, without a doubt, the best car of the Tokyo Auto Salon 2024, Madlane 935, absolutely insane. Okay, so I am here at the AMD Damned, uh, who have pretty much the quirkiest conversions to a Suzuki Jimny that um, there possibly can be. So there's one here that's uh, converted to look like a Lancia Delta, so it has that Lancia Delta grill and headlight and of course the rally spec look with the roof spoiler just like the Delta Integrale OZ racing wheels and then over here a Renault 5 Turbo so we have the French and Italian coupling here from the Group B rally era and the funny thing is it says non-turbo because actually this is based on a Sierra version of the Jimny which is uh, I believe a 1.4 NA, not the K car version with the 660 turbo. So what an absolutely original way to kind of pay homage to two very important cars from the 80s that, you know, defined what rallying was about at that time. And in the process created two uh, of the most legendary homologation cars ever. Okay, so I'm back at that really confusing Mazda Yunus Rosa with the Toyota badge in the front and a circular light conversion. So I finally found out what this car is all about. So this is a Saitama University, Automotive University uh, concept that pays homage to the concept that uh, Toyota made back in 2015, I believe, the SFR, which was a lightweight front engine, rear wheel drive, uh, possible future sports car from Toyota. That never really saw the light of day. So these guys actually paid homage to it and took uh, Mazda uh, Roadster and did their own conversion to kind of recreate those lines and that design that made that car so, I guess, you know, very interesting to enthusiasts. They've topped it up with custom-made 
tail lights and headlights and that m gaping mouth at the front. Very, very cool and beautifully executed, I have to say. Maybe, maybe it gives Toyota an idea of what they should be doing in the future with the next drop top front engine rear wheel drive. So of course, as I showed you guys some months back, uh, you would probably remember that Yokomaku-san was working on an old school project, a Nissan Cedric for Tokyo Auto Salon, as well as the R35 GTR. So we're here at the Velside booth to take a quick look at what he's done with both cars, starting with the Cedric. So as I showed you back uh, a few months back, uh, this was the intake and exhaust setup now fitted to the L series. So this is a 3.2 liter L series, completely shaved engine bay, color match to the outside. It's in the same shade of green as the M spec R34. And it is one beautiful thing sitting on Watanabe wheels. He's kept it very simple, very elegant and it looks absolutely amazing. So we have the Velside models joining today. Somebody's shooting them. Over here we have the Velside R35. So he's kept things very simple with this one too. He hasn't gone for a crazy wide body like he did last year with the Z. Just redesigning the lower part of the stock bumper, integrating a lip spoiler. So the lower portion has an integrated splitter that kind of curls up on the sides here to create a type of canard side skirts the low mounted bell side spoiler in total bell side fashion and some trim here to kind of bring it all together you can actually have a look at the rear of the cedric again like i said it's very very simple i think that's probably the theme for bell side this year is simplicity which is something I would never have thought to say about Bellside, but I guess he's going for more elegance than anything. And honestly, it will probably be easier to sell products like this than, you know, full body conversions like the Z. And indeed, the Velfire and Alphard combo keeps stopping me in my tracks here because there are so many that just look so cool, dumped on air suspension and sick wheels. This is interesting, a super silhouette based on a V35 Skyline Coupe. Interesting, but what's really funny is this thing next to it. Which, uh, this used to be a K-Van, now it's literally the lowest thing here. What on earth? <laughs> that's absolutely sick. It's like a drag spec K-Van that's been widened literally has no front end it's just like a rectangle push rod suspension slightly asymmetrical diff placement and a little four cylinder actually that's pretty an engine in the back all right and next to it is Rico's s30 as you can see no headlights so uh, race car only build stroked L series here on carbs and inside it has a very similar roll cage to the 993 with those twin sidebars and there's even a bar going across the passenger side um, really well built kind of old, old school uh, instrumentation layout you got the uh, tanks for the Tilton pedal box up there and the fuel cell in the back I love the motorcycle like to an exhaust setup coming out from the center. Massive over fenders. Uh, like I mentioned in the preview, this kind of reminds me of a mix of styles. So kind of like Bosozoku meets street car meets time attack car. So it's a lot of things in one and it is very aggressive and very wide. Let's go have a word with Rico. Here's the man, the builder of the two cars. Dino-san. What's up, man? Oh, you're practicing your Japanese? There's a shorter, there's a shorter version. Just say Akeome. 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 Much easier. Akeome. Watashi wa Riko desu. San Francisco shishin desu. Doji Rushiki. Okay. Dino. So, we shot this car in the Nevada desert. 2017. Yeah. A while back. Iconic 
shoot. Yeah, but it's changed completely. It's, it's not even the same car anymore. Yeah, completely redid it for the 2022 SEMA show for yeah. Toyota Tread Pass. Uh, it has, from traveling to Japan and realizing how these iconic RWBs have been built, they've actually been built over years. Like we're talking with the Itakura yeah, song, Raw yeah. Passion. So when I first had the RWB in 2017, and it was a Tiptronic, I would come to Japan and see my friend's cars in here, and I'm like, man, my, my car just had the kit, had the wheels, suspension, but I didn't have anything else. Mm. But after speaking with many of the owners, they said, Rico, I've been building this car over 10 years. So then I kind of chilled out, built other cars. For 2021, uh, full, full, full repaint, full cage, new seats, new wheels from work from Pepino-san, a uh, complete new top end for the engine, went with the Roussant with the ITBs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Very completely clean. new chassis harness with speed wire systems. Complete new wiring system for the engine with the Motec AM800. Yeah. Uh, a change suspension is all solid mount engine, solid mount transmission. And then I finally went for the dream that I always have. Because you know I love your photos. I love looking at media. And I did the custom style Lexan roof. Yeah, I noticed that. And so that was... Because originally this was a, was a Targa, a, right? Yeah, with, yeah. So with the glass. Was, with the glass, and yeah. it was smoked. Yeah. And I always wanted you to be able to take a picture from the top or from the back and be able to yeah. see into the interior. It so makes it way easier to get it shots of the It just looks gorgeous. So, and then I also reshot the gold. And so this is the new gold, and this is called Aged Inca Gold 78. And then we have this thing over here. This is built for the 2021 SEMA show. This is a 1972. Uh, tribute style to an IMSA race car. Oh, okay, so that's the look you're going to because I was kind of saying just a minute before, like it reminds me of a time attack car mixed with a Kaido racer, mixed right, so many right. styles, right? So, so during that, right, like Yankee, right? Yeah, from exactly. The, uh, from uh, Chakotan Boogie, Chakotan right? Boogie, live that to was a fan a, kind that of was thing. original yeah. inspiration. So I said, what can I do to give my own spin on that style? So the, Z the IMSA style kit is the rear fender, rear hatch, rear tail, the doors, the cowl, the fenders, the complete Geno's conversion, and the hood, which I have underneath right now. Mm -hmm. And I went with the headlight delete. Yeah. That's what I did to the outside, but remember the Rico style is that I love the history. I want to pay tribute to how it was done. So this is a 3.1 with the Makuni 50s. Yeah, I saw there were big ones. So important to have the original style. Makuni 50s with my style, with the Shade Bay, with the custom tanes. These are the ones you have to order. You can't get them in the book. You have to call Japan and order the tane suspension for the S3. So that's all original. Then with the work wheels, the M1s with the Pinosan again, keeping it. I wanted to run 15s or 14s to keep it traditional, but Toyo just doesn't have a tire wide enough to fit those fenders, so mm. we upsize to 18s. Single seat, NAS, uh, SCCA spec roll cage. This car is street driven. That's awesome, man. Well, you must be you must be happy having these two cars here at Tokyo Auto Salon. Dream Dina, come true, right? This is a dream come true. Uh, I'm I'm extremely thankful and. I hope I'm invited again, and I hope we can sit together again here next year. Absolutely, man. Well, so, it's it cool seeing the cars in Japan, that's for sure. I called it. I called it the other day. I said this car is going to be crazy popular, and there's a swarm of people around it trying to get a glimpse of the build. So Moontake really put together this project so well. The execution is really impeccable, and Greddy taking care of the turbocharging on that straight six BMW motor. Look at that, that really sits so nice. Kaizo really killed it with the design of this LTO body kit and glad to see this finally enter Japan. There's actually two cars here with this kit and it really looks phenomenal. And of course, we will be going to Moontech to do a full feature on this car and a lot of other cars that Moontech have put together over the last year. They have pretty much uh, cornered the market here when it comes to like 
really standing out with slammed, uh, functional, yet also you know very much towards the form side of things. Build um, inside out, engine bay, everything's on point. So we're definitely going to go uh, to their shop in Gunma and put a bunch of cars together and do some shoots because it really deserves to be documented on the channel. So uh, look out for that. All right, I've just gone GTR hunting now. Wanted to get a slightly better lit view of the top secret R34 GTR that has actually been built for a customer in Texas. So this car is going to be making its way into the States and it's going to join an interesting collection of cars over there that we might be able to take a closer look at uh, later in the year when we go back to Anime Matsuri. I apologize for the noise. Nissan is blaring out some insanely loud speaker stuff here. So uh, I just want to head to Bridgestone now because there's another GTR I want to take a closer look at. And here it is, the Mines V-Spec N1 based demo car that we saw at ours meeting. And this is a car that's uh, slightly been redone. Uh, it's got a full suede-like interior and some fresh new graphics. I do like that touch on the roof here. Didn't spot that before. And it's definitely attracting a lot of attention, proving that these older cars will forever remain popular. And rightly so, because these pretty much started, you know, the whole craze for JDM cars. And really cool to see the, you know, brands like Bridgestone are still embracing these older chassis. But uh, let's keep moving and see what else we can find. Okay, so I'm here at the Hashimoto Corporation booth. So these are the dealers that bring in KW suspension, BBS wheels, Brembo brakes, and a Krapovich exhaust, among a ton of other brands. Uh, but they have one car in particular this year that I just, I keep walking past and I keep stopping to look at it. It's this purple M3 wagon sitting on BBS rims and KW suspension. It's pretty slammed, as you can see. I don't know, I just have a thing for powerful wagons. I'm a big lover of Japanese vans like the Velfire, but you know, you cannot beat actually having a wagon with a performance engine and four-wheel drive like the M3 competition. So I thought I'd show you this beauty because it really stands out in this purple. So uh, the fitment on this is basically staggered, 20 inch up front, 21s at the back. Dream family car right here. And BBS, uh, these are not the BBS that you are used to seeing in Japan. This is actually the BBS that are built in Germany, two different companies. Uh, these are flow formed. Uh, the ones in Japan are forged. These have very different designs. Uh, there's a bunch of customization features that you can apply so you can kind of customize the look of the wheels. And the cool thing is they even have spinning center caps. So actually, if you look at on the wheel here, you can see how it just spins around, which means that when you drive, the BBS logo is always straight and is literally a godsend for photographers. We never have to feel like we need to adjust wheel placement. And uh, you can also make sure you fit them perfectly with all these extra spacers and hub extenders. Right here on the other side is the M2 BMW that's on display at Hashimoto Corporation again, sporting the new Akrapovich exhaust system, which you can actually take a look at here. It's displayed on the wall. So it's a full titanium system, starting up front with their link pipe set, which adds another 13.4 kilowatts of power with the rear slip online titanium and pipe set, which adds another four kilowatts of power. So a decent upgrade. Uh, of performance, both power and torque, but also the drop of weight, which is pretty considerable on, uh, you know, modern day exhaust systems. And this thing really looks sick. There's even an additional wing. I had no idea Krapovich actually made wings. Pretty cool to see. It's sitting on the BBS wheels that we saw on the M3 wagon. These are in black. And again, this is another car I really wish I could drive. I want to test out this new M2 chassis. I'm kind of keen on the looks, uh, the dimensions. It's much more compact than an M4. And of course, the performance that comes from it. So uh, 
Hopefully we can uh, borrow this car, uh, you know, during the course of the next few months and take it out for a spin. Here's that Fronte Coupe GX at the Endless booth. I just love these little two-stroke compact coupes from the 70s. You can actually take a look at the engine. Beautifully restored. You see the expansion chamber on the exhaust. And I do wonder if it's going to smoke as much as the car we saw at Star Road the other week with Larry when uh, Inuit Sun turned it on and literally engulfed the entire neighborhood in a massive cloud of oily smoke. Okay, what do you guys think of these headlight grille conversions for the Hilux sold by Axel Japan? Seems to be quite the popular thing to do in Japan, going for square headlights on cars that never came with square headlights. Uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it's a massive fail. So, uh, I don't know. So when you see this kind of stuff at Tokyo Auto Salon, they're not shooting cars. So this is another very cool thing. This is an FL5 done by Mugen. So the Group B Civic Type R finished off in a satin finish with lots of carbon fiber. It's got the Mugen livery. Sick Recaro fixed bucket seats. This car looks always so good from the front three quarters, but unfortunately for me at least, when you go around the back, that coupe four-door silhouette just doesn't flow as well as it should. Although the back, they've improved it a lot with that diffuser section, lots of carbon, single center exit exhaust. And we do have to wonder, is this gonna end up for sale or is it just a show car? So whenever Mugen makes cool concept cars, unfortunately they never get released, but hopefully this one will be. Uh, this is why I love coming on Sundays. <laughs> this is insane, look at this. What a treat to be seeing an MC12 right next to the brand new MC20. Legendary Maserati against the new one. Okay, so we have two cars that are sporting some of the best engine bays. Iding Power built M3 power plant here. And two cars up, we have the Tech Arts 7A USD M Spec A86. Look at that setup. So we saw this car at the Hachiroku Matsuri, and we've seen this car. Uh, before last year, even at uh, Weekfest. So uh, this is another car that I want to go to Moontech and shoot with because it is absolutely phenomenal. Just spotted this JZA80 at Tom's with that legendary TRD bonnet. For some reason, Tom's always goes for green demo cars and they always end up looking so good, especially with the gold wheels. This is one beautifully restored car. Still has that TRD front fender there. Very nice to be seeing this kind of old metal at TAS. All right, I'm going to end the coverage to Tokyo Auto Salon right here. I really hope you enjoyed seeing my uh, selections of what really stood out to me. Uh, there's so much to see. I just had to make a choice uh, of what really uh, made a difference this year. And uh, we're going to be shooting a lot more in the coming days. So there's so much coming on the channel. We got up to some cool stuff yesterday as well. And we'll be going uh, for a very special shoot tonight. Uh, Liberty Walk Kuntach and Liberty Walk F40 is going to be epic and more stuff coming in a few days uh, as well. So uh, lots to uh, come back for, so make sure you do that. Check back soon for more.